We've been ambassadors for our traditions, but we've also been searching for our own voices as artists, trying to connect the American part of ourselves and the Asian parts of ourselves. And over time, we've realized that instead of always trying to fit into other people's ideas of what Chinese or Indian or American means, we can step forward and create our own sound. This idea of being connected to these traditions, but also going forward in our own way and kind of forging new directions because again, we're, we're working on the groundwork that's been laid by so many other, so many other immigrants, so many other artists, all of these people working in, in these worlds before us. We can, we stand on their shoulders really. Both of us come from upbringings where we were trained in the traditions of our ancestors. So she in Carnatic music, um, Indian classical singing, and me in traditional Chinese music playing the Yangqin. The project that we're working on this week here at Britain Piers is very open-ended. <laughs> it's really kind of a free exploration, exploring Asian American identity through music. You know, Raylan and I were building off of each other in this, this way that feels magical. And I think a lot of traditional concert composing can be one on their own, but for me it's from the start been this idea of working together with people and that kind of co-creation. I'm trying to always find ways where the performers can feel like they're creating it with me, the piece, and that each time the piece is different. So to actually be co-creating something with someone feels just like a beautiful blueprint for how I want my creative life to continue. Cousin, it's nice to see you here at the market. We are, we are exploring what is idiomatic. What does it mean for something to be idiomatic? And we are finding that we are defining the vocabulary and the grammar of our idiom as we go. Music and songs in particular are becoming a sort of interface for us to articulate our transcultural identities. Well, she wants cumin, sage, and coriander. Interesting. What do you think she's making? I don't know anything about cooking. Is, is, that, what, is that all that she wants us to get? Uh, yes. Okay. This piece that we're working on uh, that I've called Grandma for now is probably a new title that you'll see at the open session. I think that there's a future here. I, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, um, how theatrical it could become. It could totally become a stage work. But it also, it's really fun to do the storytelling just at our instruments, really, in the, in the kind of locked-in place like that. And so we have this beautiful setup with mics and a tam-tam and a bass drum and the yangqin. We even take, have taken the lid off of the piano, which you know I've never gotten to do before, and it looks like a yangqin. So we're experimenting and we're just recording our discoveries. And there's something about this riff or about being in the space that lends itself to like a playfulness, which I think is often the way to negotiate some of these like huge political identities is is having the spirit of playfulness and that fits nicely with experimentation. It is fun in some cases when you don't know the instrument because I think some really cool things can emerge from that air of discovery but I think we also are finding we could just do some more and create some more if we knew how to incite certain sounds from the percussion and so I think we're really looking forward to learning from Bebe how that works. I've been good, I've been keeping myself occupied. So I'm in the process of becoming a new persona or artist named Manta Woman. This happened during lockdown, watching RuPaul's Drag Race for the first time, like having to be still for the first time, 
realizing that the songs I was writing as Raylan were actually coming from like a deeper place and from a place, a vulnerable part of myself I wasn't really listening to. I think Mantle Woman is going to be a pop star. Mantle Woman is a psychedelic siren making hypno pop, serving dream folk surrealness. And Shruti's been so encouraging. I think that's, that's also a part of this for me. It's bringing queerness into the picture. You know, queerness is, is, is something that I've always sort of separated from my Asian-ness and it takes being around open-minded people and open-minded audiences and loving ears um, and loving people like, like Shruti for me to accept that, that whole puzzle as well. We get to feel and fail and fall in love again, love again, love again, then we should get back together, should we get back together we could get back together but would we get back together we could just be